Hey everyone, welcome back. Chatter Patriot Astro here. As most of you know, I've recently published the first two of three videos in a short series on selecting and setting up your own PC to control your astrophotography imaging system. So far in the first two videos, I've tried to explain a bit about the computer hardware and components that make that system up. I've also talked a good bit about adding an internal NVMe SSD as another way to possibly improve system performance. And I then dedicated video two to helping you get your Windows installation over to that new faster drive. Of course, everyone is waiting for video three, where I take you through my own personal end-to-end -end astro imaging PC build process. And that makes sense because that's the one that gets your system up connected to your hardware and automating your imaging sessions, whether or not you watch videos one or two or care about NVMe SSD drives. Today, I'm gonna to take a short detour though into another topic that is also related to imaging storage, but more specifically about moving files to your processing system or an online archive. To do that, we'll dive into another Nina plugin by Tom Palmer called Remote Copy. You might remember some of Tom's work from the session metadata and web session history viewer plugins he also wrote. All right, who's ready? Wouldn't it be nice to have your imaging session files automatically move to another system for processing later? Or maybe it isn't about getting them to the processing machine as much as it is about having them backed up. Or maybe it's more interesting than that and you wanna send them to a system inside your house so you can monitor with a live stack of what's coming in during the session that you're in right now. Whether it's a time saver, simplifying a part of your overall process, related to file loss paranoia, or something more fun, it doesn't matter you may have a need for this plugin. As you can see, I'm in Nina 2.0, which is now the release version, by the way. And if we head over to plugins available, we can find the remote copy plugin. I've already installed mine, but if you need to install it, use the button at the upper right hand corner and click it again when it says it requires a restart. This will restart Nina and complete the installation process. So what does this plugin actually do? It uses a file transfer tool that's built into Windows called RoboCopy. I'm sure several of you have used it before for other purposes and maybe even for this very purpose. What it'll do is monitor a specific folder on disk, which is by default your profile defined image file path where all of your Nina session imaging data gets saved. As it monitors this folder location, it'll replicate any new files and directories in that location over to a destination you define. This is a one-way replication process. Anything that exists in the monitored source folder that doesn't currently exist in the destination folder will be copied. I'll show you through a couple iterations during the demo how this whole thing works. And even though this is called remote copy, the destination can either be local or remote. I use it to replicate files over my home network to my image processing system, but you can use it to send copies to online storage like OneDrive or even just a local USB connected device as a backup. If you aren't too familiar with Nina yet, you can see and set the image file path in your profile by going here in Options, Imaging. Here's the image file path. Pay attention to the image file pattern as well. This is important because it defines the naming convention used by Nina for the file names and folders it creates. Quickly looking at how I'm using the variables here and by reviewing the pattern preview below it, we can see that I'm first creating a folder because it ends with a backslash. It's a combination of the current target name Nina application start date, and then I add C8 to the end to remind me which scope I'm using. There's a variable for this too, but I wanna show you how you can add your own text as well as variables. Then I have another folder inside that one with the image type. This folder level would be something like lights or bias or flats, and we'll see this in our demo. Then a really long file name that includes the target, filter, frame number, exposure length, sensor temp, star count, calculated HFR, RMS value, angle of my rotator, and the date time value. You have lots of options here. This is info I like to get with a quick glance of the file name without needing to open the file and view the fits header. Let's head back to the remote copy plugin. The plugin says it adds two new advanced sequencer instructions to Nina, RoboCopy Start and RoboCopy Stop. We can check that out by going into the advanced sequencer, at sequencer, advanced sequencer. I'll go ahead and remove the current startup sequence here to give us a little more space and make it a bit easier to look at. Now I can scroll down in the instructions list until we get to the remote copy section. Let's drag over RoboCopy Start and look at that instruction first. Here you provide a source and destination, but it's assumed the source is likely your imaging path. So what exactly does this instruction do? 
it starts up a copy of the RoboCopy executable in the background that will replicate files from the source to the destination. Basically, it starts watching the source folder and moves files that exist here but don't currently exist in the destination. To do this, it checks the folders every 60 seconds and based on what it sees, replicates whatever's needed at that time. Remember, this isn't real time. It happens once every minute. Just so you know, if a file transfer ever fails, it will be attempted a total of two times before it gives up on that file. Another important note about this command, you can only use one copy of it at a time. If you try to add another RoboCopy start instruction while the first one is still active, it will stop the first instance and start a new one using the new source and destination parameters for replication moving forward. However, this is only in regards to RoboCopy managed by this plugin. If you happen to run your own copies of the RoboCopy executable directly from Windows, those will be okay and continue to run as expected. Also, if the managed RoboCopy process stops for some reason, this plugin will automatically detect that and try to restart it. If you ever need to troubleshoot any of this, it does generate a log file that it stores in the typical Nina logs folder. Now that was RoboCopy start. What about RoboCopy stop? This command will wait a defined amount of time and then terminate the active RoboCopy replication process. By default, this is 120 seconds. Now this should be okay for most use cases, but you need to remember that this plugin only replicates files when it wakes up and checks the source folder every 60 seconds. Since we need to make sure we move everything that we find before this gets shut down, we need to be careful and make sure we have enough time to move everything. The two situations I can think of where you may need to add time to this instruction is when you're taking lots of short exposure images and have many files to replicate, or when you're sending data over a slow communication channel that takes some time to complete, like possibly your home network, or more likely something online, like OneDrive. As an extra protective measure, the plugin will automatically try to stop the RoboCopy process whenever Nina stops. But as a best practice, use this instruction. Okay, let's go back to the plugin, but this time to installed to see the only two configuration options we have available. Here you can choose to show the RoboCopy window if you like, but I typically don't since it's just one more thing to get in the way. You may want to have it open though when initially testing a destination like OneDrive, so here's how you do that. Tom also shares the RoboCopy command line switches he uses. You should only ever manipulate this if you know what you're doing, otherwise leave it as you found it. And now back to the advanced sequencer. That's it. You tell it to start and what to monitor and where to send files, and at some point you tell it to end. Let's do some testing to show it working, and then I'll talk about how I use it. I need to set a destination, so I'll click here. I'll define this as my image processing computer, Astro Xeon, over my network. Here are a couple shares I have set up on that computer. I'll use the transfer share, and then go to the RoboCopy folder. If you're wondering, I add underscores to the front of items I want sorted first alphabetically. No other special reason. Notice here that I already have three folders with consistent naming convention. I have multiple mounts that use the remote copy plugin, and I want to keep that data separated. So in this case, since we're using my EQ6R Pro, I'll right click and create a new folder here named from underscore EQ6. Then I'll go into the new folder and create another new folder called Nina underscore sessions and select that as the destination. You don't need to be this complicated, but later in this video, I'll show you why I'm specifically doing it this way. There's often at least some amount of reason behind my madness. Good, I have my source and destination set. Now for demo purposes, I need to gather some data to replicate. For those of you that are new to Nina, you're about to see some basic advanced sequencing, and this is far from complete and just for the demo. Do not use this sequence for actual imaging. For demo purposes, I'll drag a deep space object sequence in between the two RoboCopy commands. I'll define the name of the target as NGC underscore RoboTest1. I do this because this field is used by Nina's file naming variables and will help in both file and directory naming of everything related to this target. Now let's go to the camera section and get a take many exposures instruction. I'll place it here. I'll set this instruction to take two 35 second exposures. Then I'll click here to add a looping condition and use loop for iterations, which I'll set to three. So basically after the three loops, it'll take a total of two times three or six 35 second exposures. For my demo to work, I need to connect the camera to Nina. So I'll go to equipment, camera, and connect my ASI 1600. 
I'll also set it to cooling because it's pretty hot tonight in Atlanta. Now let's open a couple folders so we can monitor the test as it runs. First the remote destination. Then I'll open another new window for the local USB attached NINA file location. So the left is the source and the right is the destination. Back to the sequencer and double check the test sequence. We start RoboCopy, we loop through a total of six exposures and eventually stop RoboCopy. Okay, let's click down here and start the sequence. Immediately, we are told RoboCopy is running and I can see I'm already starting to take exposures. Let me put the two file folders back on top so we can watch. The first exposure completed and Nina created a session folder and files based on the profile setup. Notice it isn't showing up at the destination though. Why is that? Because it only replicates files every 60 seconds and not in real time. Actually, we can monitor more of the important stuff here on screen if I move some of the folders up top. This way we can see the folders, some of the instructions, and the info at the bottom. Oh, and there we go. The plugin just replicated some files and folders over to the destination. Let's drill in on both ends. Yep, it's working. It's replicating the folders, images, and even updating the files from the session metadata plugin I talked about a few videos back. As always, I speed these videos up where I can to save you some time, and this is one of those times. Okay, notice the last looped exposure was taken and the sequence moved on to the RoboCopy stop instruction. At the bottom here, we can monitor the two minute wait timer defined on that instruction. RoboCopy will keep replicating files, if it finds any more, every one minute until this timer expires. Then the RoboCopy process will be stopped. And the sequence is done. Our NGC Robo test one was replicated as expected. Okay, test number two. Let's rename the target as NGC Robo test two and then reset the entire sequence using this button way up here. This will uncheck all the previously executed instructions and reset the counters and loops so I can run all of this again. In this scenario, I'll delete the files we just replicated out to the remote share. This might simulate a night where you were remotely imaging away from home and had no way to get the previous session data over to your home network share. So we still have those old session files on the local system from the other night and are about to start imaging a new target. How will the plugin handle this? Let's kick it off and see. RoboCopy starts up and immediately detects that there are files on the source that are not on the destination, so it starts moving them. It didn't wait, it just moved them as soon as it found them there. And as our current session continues, it'll move those files too. By the end of the night, everything on the source that didn't exist on the destination was replicated. Okay, now test three. What if this time I delete files on the source side? Or maybe I'm using a different local USB drive tonight. How will it handle this? Well, let's see. In this scenario, it watches the source folder and copies what it finds over to the destination. It's a one-way replication process. It never brings files back to the source system and it doesn't ever delete anything on the destination drive. Getting a better feel for how this works? Great. Of course, you might implement this a bit differently. My shared advanced sequencer templates are being updated to allow for all of this. Hopefully in the next two weeks or so, I can get a fresh version out to everyone. I have some mini template components in extras that'll include the capability. Here is file sync at session start that I may place in the sequence start area. And here is file sync at session end that I can place in the sequence end area. By placing these elements in your start and end areas and using something like a Nina startup template, you'll know that remote copy replication will run automatically every night regardless of the number of targets you image and drop in between. All right, you may see something else in my ending file sync. And this opens up a can of worms. Well, another video down. Hopefully you found this one helpful as well. Yes, updates to my shared advanced sequences are coming and it will include what I showed you today. You should have enough info to get started with the remote copy plugin without those though. As I've mentioned several times recently, a lot of content is coming. It's all really time consuming to process, so thanks for bearing with me while I get it completed. Let me know if you have any questions, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share this information with others. And as always, clear skies.